difficulty about 1441 was that it was not crystal clear. And that is what led to me particularly to having to consider very carefully which was the better interpretation of this. Because at the end of the day, you can't throw up your hands and say, I don't really know what this means. You actually have to reach a decision at some point mm. which way you go and you weigh up all the evidence. And as you said, um, Sir Roderick, there are elements there which point in one direction. Equally, there are elements which point in another. That was the difficulty. The question is, what did 4041 mean? Legal, well, uh, legal documents mean something. If it's I, not clear what it means, it can't have been concluded. Not, no, with respect, it's not. I mean, the courts are there um, frequently to decide exactly these issues in relation to contracts and statutes and international instruments. They do mean something. Sometimes it is not obvious what it is, but you have to divine it, and you have to use all the tools. Which, this is a very serious point. You can't say, because it's not clear, it hasn't been decided. It had been decided. We know what the United States think it would be. Actually, we also know what the French believe it had been. Uh, you may have seen in the documents a, a minute of a lunch I had with the French ambassador to the United Kingdom afterwards, in which he told me that the position of the French was that we didn't need a second resolution. And I've seen since then, I've never really spoken about this publicly because it was a sort of private lunch, but I've seen since then a public statement by Mr. Levite, who was the French ambassador to the United Nations, who took part in these negotiations, saying in terms, I went after 1441 to the White House. I told them that they didn't need a second resolution, and I wish they wouldn't ask for it.